The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day from TFNN. Welcome to the May 24th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's have an extraordinary day and an extraordinary weekend. And the easiest way to do that it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 7 o'clock in the morning. That's right. If you're listening in the normal time and it's 107, the core of the show is being recorded this morning, Friday, the 24th at uh, seven o'clock in the morning. So we're going to take a look at the equity futures contracts, all the all the things that you'd like to look at. Uh, if you are listening live, I would certainly love to hear from you. But we'll make this show pertinent. Uh, for the one o'clock uh, hour, the archive that you might be listening to over the holiday weekend, and have a great holiday weekend. Uh, so, look, here's the here's the deal. You can reach out to us live right now at eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. You can always send me an email, Steve at tfnn dot com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're listening at one o'clock during the one o'clock segment, don't don't do either of those because I'm not around. Uh, and of course, in the Tigers Den, as uh, John and uh, Peter have already done. Uh, any questions uh, will be just fine. So let's go ahead and get this show started on fabulous Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. So right now we have Dow Equity Futures. They're trading up 169 points. They're printing out at 25,632. That's about six tenths, seven tenths of a percent to the upside. It's pretty much across the board percentage-wise for the other three equity contracts. The ES Mini's up 18, NASDAQ 43, Russell 2000 up 10. Uh, U.S. dollar index is off uh, seven pennies. Not a big deal out there. No huge movements that I see in the currency market. The South African rand percentage-wise, the biggest of the, let's say, the six or seven that uh, I, I follow real quickly here. Uh, gold is off four bucks. Silver down seven pennies. And light sweet crude is up 73 cents out there. So the first question is, um, first question that's coming in is if... Uh, what kind of conclusions can we draw from uh, from really the information that uh, buyers and sellers are, have provided to you and I as of right now? So, and, and what is it that we really should be looking for when it comes to the end of the trading day today? So let's go take a look at the information out here. I'll draw for you what I see and the conclusions that I come up with, and then you figure out whether that uh, works for you or not. And so let's start by taking a look at, so how are we going to start this? I think we will start this by taking a look at the Russell 2000 first. And the way that we'll look at that, when I say the Russell 2000, or certainly what we're going to be looking at this morning, it's going to be the equity futures contracts. But for those of you that are regular listen, listeners, you know that we spend the majority of our time there because this is all about price discovery. And I'm not going to discover a whole lot for something that trades six and a half hours. Give me 23 plus, And the answer is uh, uh, most certainly I will. So here we take a look at the Russell 2000 equity futures contract. Very easy, very clear to see the consolidation pattern. That is this black rectangular box that price has been trading in. We know that price did try to break out that consolidation as it made a high. Uh, that high that I'm referring to takes us back to the trading day of May the 6th. 
Now, at that stage, price had broken out of that consolidation, right? But price was moving higher, doing it with less relative energy. That's the Stevie uh, Rose Momentum, ind one of the Rose Momentum indicator signals. And then it gets up to wave number seven. That's letter G on my uh, screen out here. That's using one of the Chapman wave elements, not the entire pattern. Uh, when we get to wave number seven, uh, the market singing in the key of G, we anticipate some type of reversal. Does it happen always? No. Does it happen often? Yes. Should you pay attention to it? Yes. That pattern, courtesy of Saratoga Bob and uh, Basil Chapman out there. And in this case here, that seventh wave move combined with that little bear sash candle that followed that seventh wave move, that was the way that sellers were communicating to you that the consolidation breakout was definitely not real. Now what's transpired since then, we can go back and we take a look at the charts. What took place yesterday was price was pushed down to the bottom of that consolidation. Hasn't busted yet. I'm not saying that it won't bust or that it can't bust. I'm saying that we're at the bottom of the consolidation. And at this stage here, we can go take a look at volume. We can do that. Go take a look at the Russell 2000 volume, the SPY, the Qs, and so forth. But even there, if we really just take a look at that volume, we're doing ourselves what I will call the hugest dis. D d just, just we're disservice to ourselves. How many vehicles out there in ETF world, how many vehicles out there reflect what's going on inside the S&P 500? You've got IVV is one of them, right? You've, you've got so many. You've got the doubles, the triples, the singles, multiples out there in, in any event. But what we can do is we can take a look at patterns going on inside the equity futures markets. We don't really have to look at volume to understand what the markets are doing and what the message is. And the message right now in the Russell 2000 is price attacked and rejected the bottom of that consolidation pattern. Now, the nice thing about a consolidation is that you've got your back up against the wall, and if you bust through that consolidation, you have what likely would be a measured move to the downside. Unlike when price was hitting the top of this consolidation, where there was a valid pattern to say, you know, the breakout is not real, I don't see the same thing in the Russell 2000 equity futures contract. Well. Let's go with the mere fact that there is a potential bottom here in the Russell 2000 as we take a look at its uh, contract. Let's look at the daily out here, and let's look at the daily for the NASDAQ. And we take a look at the NASDAQ, we know that markets will make tops and bottoms with a, one of a handful of patterns that you and I like to look at. One of those is that Rhodes Momentum Indicator Signal. Well, that went into effect yesterday at the close of yesterday's session inside the daily chart for the NQ out here. Now inside the NQ what you're going to be watching for today is whether or is the close really. At 1.14 in the afternoon or 7.14 in the morning as we're doing this right now it just doesn't matter when we look at a daily time frame chart. But what I can share with you is somewhere around the midpoint of yesterday's session we're just simply going to call it, I'm just visually looking at this and say about 73.80, give or take. We're at 73.55, so another 35 points to the upside. If we get to 73.80, we should have a piercing candle. We should have a bullish reversal candle. That's what you want to look for. If you get that at the end of the day today, the NQ is calling a bottom on its daily time frame. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ET market breadth, the layers of the TAS profile scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS profile scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at tfnn.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Okay, folks, so let's do this here, and let's try to stay on, on air li as live as we can. If we get cut off again, we're just, it's just not worth the, uh, worth the energy. So, look, I think what we've explored here in the den is the potential for some type of a uh, bottom. No chart yet. Okay, let me, uh, let me get that going here. Um, here we go. So now you've got, you should have my charts here momentarily. There we go. And uh, we're taking a look at the four equity futures contracts, which, by the way, as we take a look at this, one of the things that you should notice is that the NQ, the color of its bar today, has turned orange. And what that should indicate, now, again, it's an end-of-day thing, so this is pretty early at 727 in the morning. But what it's trying to do is form a new profile out here. So we'll have some, we should have, uh, anticipate some new support and resistance levels uh, Sunday uh, evening um with regard to the uh, with regard to the nq but let's get back to the ranch out here let's get back to the real meat and potatoes what what's transpired here and what kind of conclusions is it that we can draw so we know in the nq has got this potential bottom signal we know in the russell 2000 it couldn't crack through a uh, uh, its consolidation pattern out there but what else is it that we know? Well, there's a few things that we know that suggest that we should at least see more count, that this rally that we're seeing this morning should continue to extend itself. Is it a bottom or not? I think we look to the NQ for that type of a signal if it is a bullish reversal candle today. We should anticipate that that is an absolute possibility. Why should we anticipate that? Well, what we should do is we should look at other patterns that are present or were present yesterday and uh, those patterns being the following thing. Number one, if we take a look at the spot volatility index, it is a cool tool, a very cool tool, just simply because of the message that it provides you and I with regard to the markets. One of the messages, and we talked about this yesterday, and even during the show yesterday when the Dow was off 400 points, we were suggesting that the patterns we were seeing intraday we're showing us signs of some type of bounce or bottom. But what we also said was, hey, look, if the spot volatility index has a one-day rate of change close at the end of the session, that's greater than 10%, you've got to anticipate at least, 
at least a bounce in the equity futures contract overnight. Well, folks, that's what we had. We had that right out of the gate at 6 o'clock when the contracts opened up. I think they maybe traded lower for a tad, um, if, if that out there, but they just simply continued higher. And why should you have anticipated that? Or why should we anticipate that that also could be a bottom? Because remember, we start taking a look at the Russell 2000. If we're going to use that as a leader or a piece of information to help us understand what the markets are doing. Uh, we, we, we take a look at this one-day rate of change, this blue arrow, and typically when those form, we see either a bounce or bottom on the next uh, session. Does it work always? No. Does it work often enough that you must respect it? Well, I'd say it must, maybe, is that too powerful a word for you? I'll say absolutely not. You must respect what the market is, we must respect what the market is communicating to us at all times out here. And that's what it was communicating. That's the signal we had. Now look, today could be a one day rate of change of greater than, or greater, I'm saying greater than minus 10%. I mean, below minus 10% or below. And if we get that, that gets a, a green arrow signal. And a green arrow signal often is a signal of further highs to come. It's a momentum indicator out there. When we get that minus 10%, does it work 100% of the time? It works best when we're not at a high. And we're not at a high. Now, I don't know if we're going to get minus 10%. And unfortunately, this is not being replayed. So it's for basically those folks that are in the den or somebody that might be listening in uh, live right now. I don't even know if it's going to be showing up live in Tiger TV, but let's assume that it is. And for those of you, that's what you should be looking for at day's end. Because that combo would then suggest to you and I that there's more rally left in the market. So that was one element to take a look at. That's one element. What's the second element? to take a look at. The second element, and we talked about this yesterday, we weren't sure how things were going to end, was does the NYSE, New York Stock Exchange, does it close at a lower low? The lower low I'm referring to is versus May 13th, which was at 12,526. The yes, yesterday's close, 12,524. What that did was, because of that lower low, slight, you might not have seen it. It's similar to right back here. When I say right back here, I'm referring back to November 20th, 23rd out here, where the NYC made a lower low, but the advanced decline oscillator reading was saying not so fast because it was making a higher low. And that was a signal that there was a bottom, bottom to bounce that was forming. So it's very likely... And it will all depend upon the end of the day close out there. The question was, what conclusions can we make? Um, and we're trying to get to those. But right now, I'm, I'm providing you with what is it that the market needs to do today in order to confirm or deny our conclusion out here. And right now, all of this combined, what are our conclusions? Well, first of all, the equity futures markets are doing exactly what they were supposed to in overnight action. And so to give you the full read on that right now at 733 would be premature. Instead, what we can just do is let's go take a look at the equity futures contracts. Let's take a look at the 30-minute contract. Been providing great signals. Here was the Gartley sell pattern that it uh, formed out here. That led, if you start from that Gartley sell pattern, from that D point, and we start doing our wave counts to the downside. Oddly enough, coincidentally, how does this work? We looked at the Russell 2000 daily, gets to wave number seven, and then just simply moves from there. Well, here, we got that wave number seven on the 30-minute time frame. This began at 3.30 yesterday afternoon. Now, we really did get a signal out here at 1.30 when you and I were on the air, but we had to ignore that signal. When I say we got a signal, that's the piercing candle. That may be the candle that forms in the NQ today. Uh, that's a signal that the buyers are here with a pattern that was in play. Only wave number six, but price was still moving lower, doing less relative energy. And so, but that was a signal that buyers were now really lurking out here. They really were going to try to put in some type of bottom. They waited to get to wave number seven. That was a nice uh, between the session at, uh, well, a nice 3.30 session out there. Uh, that gives you the, uh, you know, a very wide-ranging bar. And now what we can also see, so here's what, what we should be anticipating from a short-term standpoint. Price got through this TDST level. Uh, it did that. It did that um, 
And uh, that says that price wants to go to the next area of resistance. That's right around 28.47. But what we can also see that as price was taking on that resistance level, Stevie's red line turned green. That's the oscillator on change line. What is that? When that phenomena occurs, it tells us that a price oscillator, in this case here, the price oscillator is a difference in this. Looking at price now, little difference between the 19 and 39 period exponential moving average that it is now at zero. What's the benefit of being at zero or above zero? Well, I like the expression, there's nothing more bullish than a rising price oscillator above zero. We've got a rising price oscillator above zero on a 30 minute time frame. But when the line turns from red to green, what we anticipate is an eventual catch up of price and that line. So even at 7.35, we've got two hours before the market opens, the cash market opens out there. It may be in that time period. It may be within the first half hour or so. I'm expecting to see a test of price and Stevie's line out there. And if that's a bullish test, meaning a test and rejection, moves higher, bounces off of it, well, then what you're looking for is the next resistance level. We covered that, or we mentioned that, which is 2847.75 to be exact. You get above that, and, and by the way, the chart patterns right now suggest that that's what it wants to do. The reason is because, or the reason that I see it that way is because on the 30-minute chart, we get to that nine count, we get to the bar following, which if there was going to be a reversal, that would have been the high. That is not the pattern that unfolded here. And so that suggests to me that we are at least headed to 2847. And then above that, well, then we go take a look at the larger term. Uh, long, the, the, you know, we'll go to a 60-minute chart. But it's about 2861 is the next level that I would be looking for. But on the 60-minute time frame, just staying with the ES out here right now, uh, we can see on its 60-minute time frame, you can see the completion of the A to B equals CD. So we had wave G on the 30-minute. The 60 minutes uh, in the 30-minute would have shown us the same A, B equals CD pattern. Uh, it makes that one. That's a perfect buy, the uh, D point. That, by the way, is a Gartley buy pattern. Let me get rid of the A to B equals CD. We can see price was also moving lower, doing less route of energy. Big old bullish reversal candle out there. And now what price is doing here, it's already recycled its nine count as well on a 60-minute time frame. And its resistance level, where it's gotten up to, not surprising that we saw a shooting star here at 7 o'clock. That's a bearish reversal candle uh, as price is coming right into resistance. And that resistance line is really priced here at 2841. That's another little price area for you to look at to be able to anticipate what the market is doing out here. Uh, this, there could be. There could be here um, uh, a nine count that occurs. This is an hourly chart. So we're in the 7 to 8. So uh, that could be this bar 7, 8 to 9, bar 8. It can be bar eight, nine, or the bar following nine that we get that reversal. So then a 60-minute chart here, we're going to watch to see how these candles uh, form. Does it create a second TD setup nine count? Which, by the way, would give you support right at the about the 28, uh, 20, 28, 28 area, uh, give or take. And um, and if price is able to clear this resistance to 28.41, uh, then price would be headed up to 28.58. That's what the one-hour time frame chart communicates to your eye. But hey, look, and I don't know if we're going to skip through this break here. It's fine with me if we do, Al, because uh, this is really not being replayed at uh, 1 o'clock. And so this is for the benefit of everybody in the uh, den out here. Uh, what I want you to still recognize is I doubt, even on a bounce, we're at 2838, that what we're going to see, folks, is a close above 2872. Now, 2872 on my chart, we're looking at the weekly time frame. Uh, it's 2871.92 is the exact number, so I'm just rounding here. That is Stevie's green line. But what that is and what is more important is the mere fact that this is a close below the April lows, as well as Stevie's green line out there. And what I mean by that is the following. Um, give me a moment here to, to look this up here. This, will that work? Yeah. So here basically are all of the so-called unfavorable seasonal cycles, the sell in May. And uh, what I've noticed here with regard to sell in May, sell in May is a real deal once you see it close below the April lows. And that's the yellow box 
right now that we're in. You can take a look at that. This is the Dow, by the way. So I'm using the Dow because that's where all my study has been on and so forth. And uh, that says that we're not likely to see, in the case of the Dow, by the way, the number I'd be looking at is probably 26064. So, um, but, so here's my conclusions. My conclusions are based on what I see today, right now, the way things are trading this morning. Is we've got the potential for a bottom signal confirmation. And if we get that, we should anticipate more of a counter trend rally. But is that the bottom that leads to new all-time highs? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so because I really believe what we're going to see here is the market move lower. It's only May 24th. How about June 24th? I don't know if that's a trading day or not, but I'm going to go with June 24th, June 25th as the uh, time frame for when the uh, market actually makes a, a good summertime uh, bottom out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at the equity futures contracts. Um, the other questions were... Um, and those are the conclusions. Is there a conclusion out there? Market is doing exactly what it should be doing. And now what we have to do is, uh, is simply uh, let the market continue to provide us with new information. Should you be short as we speak right now? Not as, not as I see it, not as I see it on a, uh, on a holiday Friday. Um, uh, Ruby's asking, she's still short the Russell 2000. Uh, do I see a rebound over 1,600 soon? So, Ruby, let's let's go take a look at what the short-term charts are suggesting for you and I. Here, what we're seeing inside the Russell 2000 on a 30-minute chart out here, we're seeing a test of Stevie's red line. Now, it has not turned green yet. I don't have the price oscillator on here to, to know exactly where, where we're at. But right now, if price is holding this test out here, uh, Ruby, that may be generating a fairly significant piece of information for you. Where the Russell 2000 is very likely headed to, let me put it to you like this. Where the Russell 2000 is headed to, as long as price remains about 15, let's give you the real conservative one, as long as price remains above um, 1505.70, price is headed for this little resistance level. You're asking about 1600. The first resistance level on the 30 minute time frame, Ruby, gets you right up to about 1518. The second one, because if price closes above that, you should really anticipate to move up to about 1527. Now, that's the 30 minute time frame chart. That's what the short term time frame chart is communicating to you and I. Let's go step that up a notch. Let's look at a 60 minute time frame chart. The 60 minute time frame chart shows what? Shows the completion of the A to B equals CD shows a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom, that bullish engulfing candle. Price has moved higher off of that. It's recycled, it's recycled through that nine count. This says that where price is headed to is about that 1525, and then above that 1535. You're asking about 1600. We haven't seen 1600 just yet. Those other areas would need to be taken out before that would come to fruition. If we take a look at on the Russell 2000, where is Stevie's red line? That number is 1541. So let me cut to the chase here. The first level of resistance, of significant level of resistance, not on the short term, but on the daily time frame here, is a bounce to 1541 out there. And we're at 1511. So another 30 points higher is what I would anticipate, unless the market gives us some new piece of information uh, later in the day, but as a 7:43 in the morning, that is what I see. I hope that answers your question. Hey, let's go to uh, John in Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Thanks for your patience this morning. Hey, Steve. Thank you, uh, Steve. I'll get right to it. Um, I wanted to ask if you would assist me, please, with your eyes uh, focusing first upon the corn futures market, uh, the new crop corn, the December corn futures that be z c z nine uh, i would like to see oh corn just an Come on, corn, 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 corn yeah corn. just to see a uh, independent view and if you'd uh, if it'd be of value to you and your listeners uh, i'd share a, a couple of highlights uh regarding this price and what could lie ahead and this three-day weekend yeah yeah. So first, with regard to, uh, why don't you do that? Uh, let me just click, quickly give to you and our, uh, the folks that are listening right now. If we take a look at corn, here's what we know. This is the December contract. 
And what we know is that a few days ago, there was a new daily profile that formed. And the top of that box, John, was 402, and it formed below price, which is typically a bullish meaning out here. So prices above daily and weekly, this says that it wants to continue to move to higher ground out there. At least resistance has failed. We then go back, take a look at prior swing points, and this says that price is headed back to the May 29th, uh, May 29th, 2018 level in the 423 range. So that's what I see uh, just as a quick view. But l let me share the mic with you and, and go right ahead. Steve, I just wanted to, uh, just ahead here, for what it's worth, uh, I am long uh, the uh, these corn futures, and I can envision, in fact, I'm going to just lay it on the line, I speculate we're going to surge possibly 10, 20, 30, 40 percent right from here. Um, and uh, just by way of history, um, we're dealing right now with planting and growing season of uh, the, uh, the United States crops. Uh, corn, beans, wheat, and cotton. Well, hay, we can throw that oats, but uh, those first four are the biggest. And um, we're dealing with futures prices, and the function of the futures market is to uh, essentially provide best guesses of an uncertain future crop size. So we're not trading with corn. We're not trading in these corn futures. We're not trading corn. We're we're trading market participants' guesses as to how big or small the crop will ultimately be, and that of course is unknown. It's a function of numerous things. Most importantly, growing weather. And what I will tell you is these corn futures had been shorted by the crowd ever since the first of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, and that paid off with declining price. Everybody and, and the short selling, betting on lower prices, was absolutely massive. I mean, off the charts, massive. Meaning everybody, meaning that crowd, is now underwater, dead wrong, in a losing position. Mm -hmm. Combined with the fact that uh, November last year through today has been in the eastern and western corn belts, the prime growing areas, has been the wettest or has been amongst the three wettest in 100 years, and it continues to rain, delaying planting. Uh, so uh, my, my speculation will be it's highly likely we re reach a point of recognition, and it could occur today, it could occur Monday night. Remember, uh, Sunday night's trade is off on account of the holiday, mm -hmm. and the futures market reopens uh, Monday night at 8 p.m. East Coast time. Uh, and uh, the conditions are such that I can envision a scenario where Every, excuse me, that uh, participants in the market turn all buyers with no selling. Uh, and, of course, that is, uh, that is certainly not guaranteed to happen. And price moves into planting and growing season are incredibly risky. That is true. So I um, uh, always use risk management, but, mm -hmm. but I'm preparing myself uh, for the possibility, if not likelihood, of an explosive price move higher. Uh, so, so that's uh, that's my position. And uh, thank you for sharing your work. I'll use some of those figures to uh, 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 to calculate my uh, my risk control in the event the long side is the wrong side. Yeah, so, you know, John, what I did here for you to take a look at, um, I put up my composite symbol for uh, corn, uh, which allows me to, it's, it's not exactly the same as the uh, as a continuous contract, and it's a way of stitching together all of the prior contracts to provide you and I with some other good uh, TAS market profile information. The other thing 
that will assist you and uh, all the other traders out there is I've just simply gone back to 2016, still on a daily chart out here, and you can see a real clear downtrend line, um, which right now is probably around the 404 type area. But I, again, because of we can't really use the pricing levels here, uh, actually, um, uh, because it's not necessarily going to equate to the, what you're seeing exactly on the June contract. But I would at least put that trend line out there, because if you see a break of that, you know, there's another good, important piece of information uh, for us. With regard to where we're at right now in the thought process that uh, the bust out to the upside could take place, you know, today or anytime soon over the next couple of days out here. Here I've got the continuous contract because I don't have the December one right this second. And if I were to try to get that symbol going, we probably wouldn't. It, it takes my system too long because of too many files that are open. But I, I'm fairly certain, John, that I would see the same thing. And that is that and the TD setup count process, yesterday was day number eight, uh, was a high out there. And so a short-term high, one of two things could take place. Now, if we take a look at why is it important, folks, to take a look at this TD setup eight, nine count out here. Well, if you take a look at corn specifically, again, although it, albeit the continuous contract, uh, pricing should be similar. If we take a look at the most recent high out here. And when I say recent high, I'm referring to March 25th. You can see there was that nice nine count uh, that actually identified the top, and that led to lower lows. I'm not saying that it's going to lead to a top that's going to lead to lower lows, taking out the lows from earlier here in in May. But what I am saying it is a it is a, a topping signal to pay attention to, because it says that you could see a short-term topping in prices. John, a bite have been yesterday, could be today, or could be uh, Monday, as you are referring to, and then some type of a pullback out there. Likewise, the cool thing about this and what, um, what Paul Tudor Jones recognized, what I always took from uh, one of Tom's uh, books out there, and, and you know Tom much, you're much more familiar with Tom and his work than I am, but what I took from Paul Tudor Jones' analysis was when these patterns fail, it really tells you about the further momentum in the market, which really gets back to your uh, uh, your your initial your hypotheses out here that we see an explosion. So you've also got a set of signals out here where uh, if the nine count forms and prices continues to move higher, you've got an additional piece of information to assist you with that uh, conclusion out there. Likewise. We get to this nine count and price pulls back. It just really sets up the next buying opportunity uh, for folks out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at and put together the contracts uh, that way. Um, anything else that I can help you with? Steve, oh, I, uh, I appreciate that look, see. Uh, I always uh, value getting that uh, additional technical information to. Uh, factor into my uh, trade tactics. So uh, have a great three-day weekend and you do uh, appreciate as well. your work. You do as well. Thanks, John. That was John in Philly, and I was taking a look at the uh, corn chart out there. Um, I know that, uh, John, you as well as uh, Steve Platinum. So you were looking for Platinum Ruby out here. Let me do that. Then we'll go back to gold. I know Peter wanted to take a look at gold. I'm sure many out there uh, want to uh, take a look at that as well. Uh, and maybe because we've skipped breaks here, they're going to go ahead and replay this at 1 o'clock. So if you're listening at 1, uh, thanks so much for doing that. Uh, we'll be back to normal programming come uh, Tuesday. May not be at the uh, 1 o'clock uh, hour out there. But for Ruby, if we go take a look at uh, Platinum, let's make our way up to the uh, metals area. It's trading up $8.40 out here. And uh, Ruby was asking uh, first resistance on a rebound. So here's what you know right now about Platinum Ruby. Uh, you're above the 60-minute 60 60-minute 60 profiles out there, bullish. Uh, we're, you're above the 120-minute. Uh, now the bar is not complete. Uh, the bar here will complete at uh, 8 o'clock. Uh, and you'd like to see, and prices trade right, right to the top, 807.80. So there's a resistance level for you to take a look at, Ruby. Um, if price goes above that, then I'll just simply forward to the 240-minute time frame chart and say 811.80 is the next resistance area for you to take a look at. We do have a new daily profile that formed. And I don't know what your time frame is on trading here, Ruby, but the beauty of this new profile, uh, or it's forming, 
I'll say it's forming. The candle is orange, and uh, but it looks like it actually has formed out here. Uh, on the uh, daily, what this would uh, do, uh, Ruby, is say you could see platinum at least bounce up to 828.80. Now, look, if it closed above 828.80, that's a different uh, thing. What, what, what platinum did was it tested and rejected, in essence, its swing point from February 14th. New daily profile, bullish in structure. Would really say to you, Ruby, that it, when, what I notice about the profiles, bullish or bearish, is that when price is able to close above or below, bearish structure below, bullish structure above, let's talk about the bullish structure, that's what we're looking at. When price can close above 809.50, not by a tick or two, but, you know, a decent amount that you see out there, Ruby. What that then tells you, because that's where buyers and sellers were, that the buyers, because we know buyers are at the bottom of 803, the buyers, the group of buyers has that power and oomph to go ahead and push price at least to where the sellers reside. And that would be the 828.80 level. You did say you were using the four-hour time frame chart. Well, if you're just focusing on the 240, then what you're looking at is 811.80 as your resistance level. That box out here, I'll just expand it for you as you take a look at it. That box is fairly equally distributed. So no more power to the bulls or bears as I see it. But 811.80 becomes your resistance uh, level. So um, I guess this is the end of the show then, folks. Is that what I'm here up next with news ad? Um, I guess it is. So, uh, folks, uh, you know, thanks so much for putting up with the uh, power issues that we had. Uh, I want you to have a, uh, a great uh, weekend, a safe weekend out there. And uh, watch the uh, close today. It will reveal a ton of information as to which way the markets are going to move next. So uh, stay tuned, because also doing the show early is uh, Basil Chapman, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, seeing you come Tuesday. Take care. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers.